Hey, let's go score for a bass battler. Welcome to the man cave. We're gonna talk about these guys. Not the rotor grip paddle holders themselves, but how I got on my canoe. Stay tuned. So over the years, I've really customized my Old Town Discovery 119 Solo Sportsman to fit my needs. And again, where you fish, this boat can be set up for that. The one thing that people ask me about are these guys right here, the Yak Attack Roto Grip Paddle Holders. Now, they're not asking about the paddle holders themselves because they've been out for a long time and everyone's using them. How do you get them on my canoe? I want to go over that right now, as well as another little tidbit that I also get asked about, which to me is one of the silliest things I've ever done, and it just seemed to take off. But first, let's talk about how I put these on. So right here is your standard hardware on each side of the thwart, both the front and the rear. First thing you want to do is carefully remove these. Okay, we've got the hardware off on one side, and it's up to you what side you want your paddle holders on. Don't get rid of this guy. That guy sat right there. That's what the screw went through. That's so he didn't bore through the rail. These are not easily accessible. They're not your standard washers. You're not gonna get them at Ace Hardware. Uh, you have to get them through Old Town. So just save them, you'll have two of them. The next thing you wanna do is remove this bad boy. This is the rubber boot from the Rotor Grip paddle holder. Now, I suggest using a pry tool or a flathead screwdriver, do not use a razor because you could cut into the rubber boot and you're gonna need that. Why are we taking the rubber boot off? Because this guy goes inside this guy right in there. This is what keeps the T-bolt on the rotor grip paddle holder. We don't need this guy anymore either. So we're gonna go ahead and set that aside. We are gonna take the original screw and we're gonna go through the rotor grip paddle holder like that. Now, before we take the boots of the rotor grip paddle holder, and again, mine are a little worn because I've already had these on my kayak for a couple years, I'm gonna put a stainless steel washer on there. And I'll explain why in a minute. So basically, that's what we got here. So let's go ahead and start getting her assembled. Now, when you took the original hardware off the thwart, you're gonna have this nylon locking nut and washer. You're gonna need those, so don't lose those. So, first things first. We're gonna take this bad boy. And we're going to install it. I'm gonna go through the existing holes to pop it down. And you're gonna hold your thwart up. And I'm gonna take a Phillips head screwdriver. And we're gonna go back through. Okay, so once it starts to turn, that's about it for now. And I'm gonna tell you why. You don't want to over tighten this because you will bore that screw straight through the rotor grip and widen that hole. That's another reason why I pulled that washer on top of the boot. It just gives me a little extra security. But you want these to swing a little bit freely. Now it's a little loose right now because we haven't put the bottom on yet. But again, don't over tighten this because you will bore straight through your rotor grip and ruin it. So let's now put the bottom part on. All right, so we're gonna take that nylon nut and that washer. We're gonna go on the bottom side and just get it on there just enough. All right. I'm gonna switch sides here. Using the 10 millimeter side, we're gonna hold that nylon nut in place. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tighten her up a little bit more. Again, I'm not going that tight. 
I want this to turn freely, but I want to make sure that my nylon nut is on there nice and strong like. So, next thing we're going to do, don't lose these guys. These are plastic covers. They came with the hardware. That's so you don't hit like your shin or anything underneath the thwart and cut yourself up at the bottom of the screw. This is a plastic screw in protector. We're going to put this guy on next. You can use that same 10 millimeter and hold that plastic screw cover on there just to make sure you have a nice tight fit on there. Cause again, you want that to stay on there. And we still got some free play here. That's exactly what we want. You want to make sure there's no space in between your thwart and the rail of the canoe. Cause again, that will also warp your hull. So you want to make sure it's nice and snug, but this still spins freely. Everything's on there. The last thing we want to do, once you're satisfied with everything being in place, we're going to go ahead and we want to replace that rubber boot. And that should just press right into place, just like that. So I have one in the front. I have one in the rear thwart. I also uh, installed the Yak Attack paddle keepers here on it. So if I'm traveling to a short distance, I can put my paddle in there. But let's see how she works. I'm gonna take our paddle, snap her down. Now the reason we leave a little bit of play in these is just so it can contour to the shaft of your paddle. And then you have your paddle keeper, boom, done. Got one in the front. Got one down in the back, she's on there, just like that. Lastly, one of the goofiest things I've done on this has just gotten so much positive feedback. It's these guys right here. Now this looks like something that should have come on a kayak. It's not. This is just a half sphere with an adhesive bottom. What are these used for? Well, these particular ones came out of a CPU box for a computer at work that they weren't gonna use these. You stick these on the bottom of a CPU, or you stick them on the bottom of a speaker. It's kind of like a no-slip surface, so it's raised off the floor. They're feet, they're feet that don't allow something to slide. Again, I guess for people with speakers, these are great because you can put them on the bottom of a speaker, and if you got a lot of bass going on, the speaker won't shift on you. It's, I got one on each side, and I'll show you why I put them on there. So if I'm sitting and I want to cast for the wall but don't want to put my paddle up on the holders, paddle doesn't roll. Doesn't roll down. See again, without them, you can roll your paddle and see it moves. I spaced it just enough between the side rests here so this just one on each side, she doesn't move. Again, it, I never thought myself to be a genius. People love this, so I figured why not. These half spears, you can go ahead and get them on Amazon. Um, you buy them and they're coming a variety of pack sizes, uh, colors. I'm surprised they've stayed on my kayak for as long as they have. Um, but yeah, they work really well. If you want to do a little extra, you can put some like padding here if you want. That's up to you, it's your kayak. Do it as you wish, but again, these things have really worked well for me. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little nugget of information. And again, I wanted to share it because it's something that's worked well for me over the years. And you don't have to do the exact same thing. You can just take ideas and maybe modify it to make it look even better. Go for it. I just wanted to share this experience of what I've done to my canoe to really add to my excitement of using it on the water. Now, keep in mind, I did so at my own risk. So if you do something similar, you do so at your own risk. Why do I say that? Whenever we drill a hole into a kayak to put, let's say, a deck plate, or we add an accessory, or we want to run wiring for lights or electronics, you're altering the structure of the vessel. You do so at your own risk. 
always wear your PFD when you're in the water just in case one of those risks doesn't work out. Again, I wanted to share this idea with you. I'm not saying you have to do the exact same thing, but you can cause damage if things are not done the right way. Again, you can bore through the rotor grip and ruin it. You can bore through your, your rail of your canoe, which will make it harder for the thwart to stay in place, which in turn makes it harder for the canoe shape to stay in place. Again, possibilities for water vessels such as canoes and kayaks are endless, but you wanna make sure you do it right and you think it through before you invest the time and money into altering your vessel. So again, this was for me to give you an idea of what you can do to your canoe to keep your paddle at your side without having it in your way, as well as another way to keep your paddle in front of you without causing much of a ruckus. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like what you see, subscribe, because even old guys like me need love. Hit the bell for notifications for future videos on product reviews and fishing trips. I'm Bill Sakura, the Florida Bass Paddler. Thanks for watching everyone. Tight lines, I'll see you on the water.